life in general can carry on within limits, even though some of its specific needs are not being met. A plant or animal without the appropriate food, light, or space may lead a weakened and deformed existence, but one that is still a life. Human life is not what it could be, though it is still here, still going on. But the question is, what is human life being cut off from to leave it in such a sad and depleted condition? When's the last time you were alone? Not just alone at home on your computer, not watching TV by yourself, not reading a book or alone in a crowded room. I mean truly alone, with nothing to distract or entertain you, not even a phone. I'm willing to bet most of you can't remember the last time that happened. We've said it here many times now, we really do live in an always connected culture. Alone time seems like a relic of the past, which is exactly why I think solitude is one of the most important of all the spiritual disciplines. Because solitude means choosing to be alone. It means concentrating on our inner life and thoughts while we are totally disconnected from other people. It is a deep inner silence. In solitude, we listen to the murmurings of our own heart and to the divine whisperings of God. Solitude is completely countercultural. It goes against the very fabric of our modern existence. In the 21st century, it seems like the most unnatural, difficult thing to do. But in a fast-paced culture that is robbing us of a deep, vital connection with God, maybe the most unnatural thing to do is the only thing to do. I think to many people, the idea of being completely alone sounds lonely. It certainly doesn't sound enjoyable. But solitude is not loneliness. In fact, it's the opposite of loneliness. Loneliness is an inner emptiness. Solitude fills us up, and it offers so much more. First, solitude gives us space to look deep within and examine our emotions, our motives, and our thoughts. In solitude, we can experience what some mystics have called the dark night of the soul, as we are confronted with the reality of all that we are and have become. Think of Jonah, who spent three days in the belly of the whale, reflecting on his choice to run away from God. His solitude allowed him to see his decision for what it was and gave him the chance to make a better choice. Solitude also reminds us that God is God. Psalm 46 says, be still and know that I am God. Being quiet before the Lord reminds us who's in charge. Solitude allows us to let go of everything that we're constantly trying to control and instead just sit and soak in the Lord. Finally, solitude creates space for God to speak and for us to actually hear him speak. Our lives are noisy. Even when we stop to listen for God's voice, it's like he's drowned out by everything else that's competing for our attention. In solitude, we're able to hear God clearly. He offers to direct our steps and shows us which way to walk. Solitude is the place where God sets new directions for our lives. It's where God reveals new insights about his kingdom and how it works. In Acts 10, Peter goes on a roof at noon to be alone. While he's there, God gives Peter a vision that sets the course for a complete reorienting of his worldview about Gentiles and God's heart towards them. Because Peter was alone and quiet, the future of Christianity changed forever. Now all this sounds great and inspiring, but if you're like me, even knowing all this, solitude will be difficult. I'm a bit of a motor mouth. Silence is really hard for me, even when I'm alone. I talk to myself, seriously. My kids catch me doing it all the time and laugh at me. But in the times that I've been disciplined enough to be alone and be quiet, God has worked in amazing ways. Like the time I was at camp speaking to 500 middle school kids, two days in a camp, I had given four really good talks. 
But even though the kids were engaged and laughing and thought I was a good speaker, I knew that God hadn't really gotten through yet. So on Wednesday morning, I got up early to be alone with God. I told him the problem as I saw it and asked him what to do. Then I sat quietly and waited for God to respond. And he did. He told me to pray with the kids. My response, are you crazy? Pray with 500 tweens jammed in a packed chapel in the middle of the summer? So I left and did another talk instead. Again, it went great, but no breakthrough. Same result. So I went back to God and got the same response. Pray with them. That night, I walked into chapel and led the kids through the tabernacle prayer, eventually having all of them sit in silence before Jesus for 10 minutes. When the prayer ended, I couldn't believe the way that God showed up. Kids described conversations they had with Jesus. They told me about ways that Jesus had touched their lives and clear instructions they had been given. These middle school kids have been profoundly impacted by solitude, more than any talk I had given. This is probably why Teresa of Avila said, Settle yourself in solitude, and you will come upon Him in yourself. Where can you go this week to be alone with God? Really alone? Who knows? In all that silence, you might be surprised at what you're finally able to hear.